Tim B. Davis Show. Here we'll talk to the leaders in technology, culture, business, and the arts. We'll cover politics, advocacy, motherhood, writing, mental health, and mostly we'll focus on hope. Join Kim B. Davis, author, playwright, radio personality, event consultant, professional speaker on the Kim B. Davis Show. Good evening and welcome to the Kim B. Davis Show. I am your host, Kim B. Davis, and this evening we have Jamila Smith. She is an author and she's going to talk to us about some of her exciting books this evening. Good evening, Jamila. How are you? Hello, how are you? I'm great. So let's get right to it. You know, I always ask this question to all of my guests. 2020 has been a year. We have had COVID, we've had racial unrest, national and global unrest, we've had economic issues, we're going, we just came out of a contentious election, and now we're in a second shutdown, right at holiday time when people want to get together. I don't know about you, but how have you been managing to get through this year? What has helped you cope? Well, um because I've had to do a lot of adapting. So luckily I have a lot of support groups, virtual support groups that I attend on, on a weekly basis. So that's been helpful. Um, and then as far as like, you know, catching up with old friends, we now have what's called chips and chat. So we'll meet on Zoom and have a snack and we'll sit and chit chat online. Uh, I came up with that idea. <laughs> that's a cool idea. I like that idea. Thanks. So that's the least we can do. We've got to start somewhere. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I love the fact that you have a positive mindset and that you took a bad situation and figured it out. See, my friends, we do a whole meal and, you know, like a glass of wine. We try to act like we're all at dinner. But I like the snack thing because, you know, that could be quick. That could be like a coffee thing or a tea thing or something. Right. That's cool. <laughs> cool idea. So I want to pivot a little bit because you have this fantastic book called Sprouting Seeds. And Sprouting Seeds sounds to me like this wonderful African-American Southern tradition tale of hope where this grandmother who was the matriarch, correct me if I'm wrong. Who great, is grandmother. Great, yeah. grandmother, great grandmother. Great grandmother. And it's like she is pushing her family forward while surrounded by all these different things that she really doesn't have control over her like society. And I liken it to what we have going on right now. We have COVID-19, you know, it started in March, at least that's what we were told. We, you know, knew that it was going to be a long road, but I don't think anybody realized that it would be like this. And we see a lot of people being pushed and propelled in different ways. Like you said, you had to adapt to be able to connect with friends. But we see people birthing books. We see relationships and families getting stronger, just like we see relationships and families getting weaker. What, first tell us about your book. And then do you think there is a parallel between what you wrote in Sprouting Seeds and what's happening in the pandemic, and I don't just mean COVID, but just overall where people feel like there's an awakening, like they're, they're waking up to their promise or whatever it is they're supposed to do. Almost oh, definitely. Um, so yeah, Spreading Seeds um, is the book cover. Wonderful. It's in paperback and as well as audio. So um, if you're old school, um, it comes with four discs. <laughs> And it's also an ebook version. So um, in a nutshell, Sprouting Seeds is a great grandmother telling her life history uh, to her great granddaughter. So um, it starts out when she's like a, a young teen and takes you up to present day. Um, and so to answer your question, so um, a lot of the elements that occurs in the story, some of that does kind of like to um, play a part with what we're facing as, um, as far as like, you know, the racial injustice and, and so forth, um, different types of movements. So I would say that yeah, there could be some correlation. You know, just different um, different generation or, or you know generation span there between mm -hmm. the two. But yeah, there might be some correlation. I would say. <laughs> so 
what inspired you to write Sprouting Seeds? Um, it's interesting that you ask because it's funny. Um, because I, I wrote like um more than one story. So and I wrote them out of sequence. Okay. So Sprouting Seeds was written probably this might have been my second story because I had a story before that years prior. And so to fast forward six years later, um, so let's say it's like maybe 05 or 06 um, during that time, I used to serve in AmeriCorps, and, which is like a domestic version of Peace Corps. Mm -hmm. So um, we had to do a lot of community service, different type of community events. So my assignment was to run an after school program. And so we had to go to a training where they were um, showing us different types of activities um, to have the kids engage when they came back um, from after school, those who were super hyperactive, you know, just kind of de-escalate, calm them down to get them engaged so we can now, okay, let's focus on homework, um, get on with the daily day activities, so forth. Well, a lot of people were <laughs> paying attention to the teacher strategies. Um, I got caught up into the story that the facilitator was um, sharing with us. It was called Chicken Sunday. It was a cute story, it's a kid's story. Uh, but a girl talking about how she spent time with her grandma on Sunday afternoons. So I got caught up in the story. And uh, I don't know if that was appropriate or not, but it just it was just real intriguing. So I was kind of like, yeah, I like that story. So I went home, got started on it, um, cranked out my notebooks, and I just put all my blood, sweat, and tears into it uh, for six months. Uh, so that's how I came up with Spreading Seeds. Um, and then Cora, who's the main character, um, yeah, she was kind of like a spinoff from Chicken Sunday, but I just added my own fire and, and, and feist to that. So <laughs> that's amazing. And you know, inspiration comes at us at any time. It could be somebody reading a story. It could be somebody um, talking outside where you hear a conversation and their voice, there's something about their voice that makes you want to know more about that person or about you hear two seconds of a conversation that you know nothing about because you don't know the people. And all of a sudden it inspires a story. So inspiration can come to you from anywhere. But I want to ask you a question. So while you were working with the kids, it sounds like they were reading a lot. Um, not really. <laughs> I know that's supposed to be the focus. <laughs> to get them into doing homework and so forth. Um, but yeah, it turns out, cause you know, every facility is different. So mm -hmm. ideally they wanted us to have them focus on academics, you know, let's do the tutoring and so forth. But um, I was at a childcare facility. So it was more like, you know, hang up your backpack, let's get some crackers and some other types of snacks. I'll go out and play. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so there was no time for that. <laughs> but, um, but the idea of it was to, yeah, get them engaged in reading and so forth. Um, just ask, just asking your opinion is there, because I always ask this question to authors, what do you think drives young people to books to get them engaged? Because we hear this a lot from parents who say, I can't find anything for my kids to read. I can't get them to read. And we always say, first of all, do you set an example? Do you read in front of your kids? And then, you know, you go from there. If your parents are a reader, typically you are a reader too, but not always. But sometimes I think kids are looking for characters to engage them. But you tell me as, as the expert, what you saw or, or what you were seeing in terms of kids' interest in stories. I would have to say, um, definitely you wanna find content they can relate to and that engages them. And in some cases, that may be the opposite of what a parent wants their child to be exposed to. But it's like, let's be real, you know? So it's like, you're gonna sit them in front of a TV and let them play video games or watch certain type of movies. So, I mean, with, with supervision, what's appropriate? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what's the difference with putting pages in front of them with words? So um, yeah, you definitely wanna find something they can relate to that's um, pertaining to them, um, that's relevant to them and, and definitely um, what, you know, issues they may be encountering on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking for teens, for example, obviously, you know, and you gotta be age appropriate. If you have a 15 year old, you don't wanna like present material like you would have a fourth grader. So, you, you know, she's intriguing boys, making money, getting a job, you know, mm -hmm. um, going to the mall or playing different types of games. So yeah, any stories that might have characters related around that. Almost like um, 
I guess consider it as if like you had a story where she feels like she's talking to her best friend on the phone or texting, but instead it's a character she's reading about that makes sense. Because mm -hmm. um, I know that had worked for me um, when I was, you know, when I was in school um, growing up. I wanted stories that I could relate to, and then eventually I decided to write stories um, that I wanted to read and and be able to relate to, but couldn't find them or just didn't have access to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So let's move along to Runaways because Runaways sounds like a juicy story for <laughs> teenagers. All yes. the things that, you know, or teenagers up to young people, you know, the things that we hear and your book has been compared to Set It Off, which is an interesting uh, comparison. So t let's talk about that a little bit. Good Tell thing. us about Runaways. Um, so Runaways, this was... um my second story. So when I was talking about how I wrote my sequence, uh, wrote my stories out of sequence, I had started Runaways um, prior to Sprouting Seeds. So I think I was like in maybe undergrad at the time I had desk duty. So, you know, I just would kill time with just writing in my notebook in between assignments. Um, so yeah, that's how I came up with Runaways. But um, that's a story with four teenage girls trying to escape a group home facility. Mm. Um, and so they're between the ages 14 and 16, and they come from different backgrounds. Um, so one girl might be from like South Phoenix, she got someone from LA, uh, San Diego and so forth, um, and different social class. Um, and so, yeah, they come together. And, and I say it's like a, a team version of Set It Off and Girl Interrupted because we have um, some content in there where it's kind of like, well, yeah, that's, that's what some of our teens encounter, you know, those who are in like in the system like mm -hmm. if they're raised in foster care or so forth. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, but I wrote Runaways. Um, I'm going way back, I'm dating myself. It was like early 2000 oh. when I had wrote the first two chapters and I just put it aside, you know, years passed, you know, life went on. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had um, wrote Sprouting Seeds and after that had flourished, then I came back to Runaways, had a revamp and just changed because, you know, lingo changed and so forth. Um, and so, yeah, Runaways um, began to flourish probably about four years after, so. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I was all over the place. <laughs> That's okay. What <laughs> inspires you to write about kids from a group home? Um, for some reason, when I would write, my, my thoughts always tend to focus towards like um, um, youth and young adult. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if it's maybe because that's, at that time, you know, I was like right out of high school and undergrad. So, uh, <laughs> so you know, had exploring life, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I just wanted a story where there's a lot of action, um, almost like if I were to watch a movie and and just have like a lasting impression on me, then I was like, yeah, I wanna have a story similar to that. And these were stories where I would just think them and then like within 10 minutes at a whim, I would start writing. Or sometimes I would be sitting talking to a friend. And like, I remember we were, okay, I had a lot of downtime. We were on campus um, in undergrad. So I was just sitting at my friends. Um, we were sitting on the floor watching movies, you know, on her little small box TV. And um, and so I was thinking like, yeah, I want to write a story. And I think such and such is going to happen. I think I'll do this, I'll do that. And I was like, you know, I'm going to call you back. Let me go upstairs. <laughs> and I had like the first four chapters out. And, uh, and I was sharing them with my friends, so. That, that was fun. But yeah, I, I wanted runaways. I just, I was excited, just wanted something that I had a story where there would be some elements where maybe I wish I were brave enough to in, in, engage into, but maybe didn't have the courage or um, was just too shy. And then I was like, well, let's, let's create these four alter egos. Let's put them on, on paper. <laughs> so there you have it. <laughs> so with Runaways, and I'm going to go back to Sprouting Seeds, what message um, does Runaways uh, pose to the reader? Runaways would be more so, let's say, if a lot of times, you know, you might have like um, the youth and their parents or other adults, and there might be like a gap in communication because of discomfort. Um, whereas, let's say, if they read the story, then they may be able to identify with the character to say, okay, well, I know this is what I would say or not say to my young teen at home or to my niece or nephew. Um, so almost kind of like giving insight 
so that um, they can get help with breaking that barrier um, when it comes to discomfort and communication, so to speak. Okay. And what would be the message that sprouting seeds poses? Sprouting seeds, that's pretty, pretty much more like um, just thinking about somebody like your, your elder and your family, someone you would never forget. Um, almost like if you were have, cause I don't know, not too many families have like the big mamas now, you know? So I have somebody one. that we can <laughs> reflect on, like someone who has a lot of wisdom, like, wow, okay, I wanna be like grandma when I grow up. Someone who has all the stories, things to share um just to show like how how life was hard but yet you know somebody was able to get through it she survived look at her okay maybe i can too so mm -hmm. almost kind of like you know inspiration mm -hmm. um that somebody can maybe share with somebody if, if they were to become um of age where they uh, establish a legacy in their family so I hear some commonality. I hear some similarities between the two stories about insight, passing along knowledge, being able to go from one um, level to the next level. You think that's intentional? Is that what you're going through or what you're going for in your books? Um, maybe at that time, it, it probably was. It's funny you had asked. I never really thought about that, but it, it's a possibility. Okay. Um, and now that I'm more mature, so it's like, I, I can reflect back and say like, okay, you know, uh, cause I know when I wrote the stories, I was going through a different phase of my life. You know, it's like, again, straight out of high school, exploring life. Um, so yeah, I almost had like, I don't want to say like a sophomoric mentality, but if, you know, my attitude was different then. <laughs> so my outlook was a lot different, but um, now that I can look back and it's like, oh yeah, I can, I can see yeah, some similarities, but then growth as well. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Maturity is growth and that can become wisdom. That's a wonderful thing. So tell us about Cindy, because that was an interesting story as well. Thank you, Cindy. Um, so yeah, this is Cindy. And um, Cindy's a girl, she is, um, the story's depicted in Brooklyn mm -hmm. and she's in foster care. And so it takes um, takes you through different trials and tribulations that she encountered from um, young childhood all the way up to adulthood. Um, and so, again, this was <laughs> when I was an undergrad again, <laughs> had nothing to do. And I had created Cindy because I had to take, um, I think it was like a pottery or sculpture class and I cannot draw like mm -hmm. stick figures. That's like state of the art for me. So <laughs> I was like really exploring my artistic vibes then. And I remember I was just kind of sketching my notepad. I, I was like trying to draw a face and I was playing with the complexion, make it darker, lighter, shading. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to write Cindy on it. And I gave her like a, some pigtails and a bow or something. Yeah, I was getting really extra with it. And I just, it was just the project. I was like, it's a drawing, it's called Cindy. And I'm like, I should make a story about her. I need to make her come to life. And so that was the story where I was talking out loud with my friend, we were sitting on the floor um, in our dorm. And so I was like, yeah, I'm going to give it a try. And, and th during this time also, because um, again, we had nothing to do. You know, we didn't have transportation. We went to an HBCU. So resources were very limited. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, you know, that was the time when we really had time to be creative. And mm -hmm. so um, I think my friend kind of inspired me a little bit. You know, I was like, well, I'm going to, you know, try it out and I'll share it with you. Let me know if you think it's good. And, you know, she was the one really, because she's like, yes, it's really good what happens next? I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll hurry and finish. Cause really like if, if she would have shot it down, Cindy wouldn't came to life, but, <laughs> but yeah, I, I made it happen. Um, and I think that took me about maybe a few years as well. So, okay. yeah. Well, thank you to your friend that did not shoot it down because <laughs> yes. we have it here so that we can read it. Um, but tell us what is the message um, for Cindy? that just going through from foster care to adulthood successfully? Right. Okay. So um, that definitely how, again, you have youth that encounter a lot of challenges and so forth. But, um, and a lot of times if you may have um, like young teens, if they don't have like that adult figure to look up to, all they have is themselves. So mm -hmm. yeah, there are ways to overcome those barriers. Um, you may have to go the back door route, but yet, you know, it's, it's a way to happen. 
as mm -hmm. a way to make it happen. So, um, so yeah, again, probably a story where young young girls can relate to where um, they don't have anybody they can go to, but yet they have their best friend or or maybe they might have a sister they have nothing in common with, but their best friend they've known since thick and thin, that's their sister to heart. So, uh, and I know some of us may be um, encountering that or maybe we have in the past. And so, um, you know, and this insight to let you know, like, okay, um, you may not be close with family members, but you have family outside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Seek family in a positive way. So I'm, so we're going to put a pin in that because I want to come back to that about family. Um, but I want to go back to something that you said earlier. You kept saying this is all during undergrad and I get that it's, it's during undergrad. There's, that's a youthful time in your life and there are experiences that only happen there. And I know people who have gone to HBCU. I did not have the privilege to go to an HBCU. I, that is one of the things that I always wish that I could have done because you guys have experiences that many of us don't. So I want you to think about it, even though you had limited resources, look at what arose from that. Look at what you were able to create and these fascinating stories. And as I said earlier, I see a connection between all three. Is there something, and I know I sort of asked you this question earlier, but do you think there's something that either happened in your life or that you observed maybe while running an after school care program or even being in HBCU where you saw different people from different backgrounds and they had different experiences that sort of have inspired you to write? Um, honestly, not really. I was kind of introverted. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so these were just characters I just created myself. Okay. Um, if, unless I, I may have, I may have seen a movie here or there, um, mm -hmm. maybe embellished on that, but yeah, majority of my characters in the, in the content and so forth, were just something I had created on a whim. Mm -hmm. Um, and then during that time also, um, yeah, like I said, I was, I was introverted. And so when I went to the HBCU, um, at the first university, because I had transferred. So when mm -hmm. I was at the first one, um, it was a very hostile environment. So my friend and I, all we had was each other, mm -hmm. the, um, the very close friends that I had. So I guess, I guess when I wrote Cindy, that was maybe mm -hmm. yeah, some connection there. You know, there's no one else. All we have is us. Let's stick together. Let's support each other. That sort of thing. Whereas when I went, uh, transferred to the other school, yeah, it was totally different. Again, I was still introverted, but I didn't feel as if I was um, not being supported as much because, you know, the resources were better. And, um, and I had a car, so I was able to get out into the community more. <laughs> I was stifled to stay in. <laughs> so yeah, that, that, that helped. <laughs> okay, that's a good thing. See, I thought maybe you were a people watcher because I'm a people watcher. I'm an extrovert, but I like to sit and watch people and just be quiet and just observe. And that's where sometimes my ideas come from. But I want to go back to what you said about families, how you can develop these relationships with people who aren't necessarily related to you, you know, or you can just have really strong family ties. I see that through your books. Would you agree with that? I would agree. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now your sprouting seeds, is that based off of a grandmother figure in your book or is that a character you just made up? It was a character I made up. Um, and I remember there was a movie, I believe Cicely Tice was in, called mm -hmm. Miss Flora's House. Okay. And I never I never saw the movie. I just remember the title. Mm -hmm. And I think I came in like maybe towards the end, you know, when all the, all the characters were together. So I'm like, oh, I want to be like that when I get older. <laughs> but I never saw the story, never saw the movie till like literally like two months ago. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I'm way behind. But it was just something about that that picture I saw. And it stuck with me. And then when I listened to um, that story, Chicken Sunday, then yeah, it really, it just brought it out. And I was like, wow, yeah, I need to do this. And I always just said when I was, when I was a kid, I, I, was, I always said like, oh, I wanna live to be a hundred. <laughs> that was like my wish, you know, I was like six or seven years old. I wanna live to be a hundred years old. What's it like uh, as a grown up, as an older person? So mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to see what I could develop in Cora along those lines, so. <laughs> well 
I think that is what is so important about storytelling, whether storytelling happens in a book, whether it's visual or audio, you saw a scene from a movie that impacted you so much that you wrote a whole story about what your perception, sort of kind of what that scene was, but just how it made you feel. And you developed all these cat all these characters. That's wonderful. Thank you. So I want to ask you, you're you're older now, not trying to date you. What <laughs> what things have you learned in terms of writing? being a published author on um, the business that you mm -hmm. didn't understand when you were younger? I've definitely learned um, the marketing mm -hmm. and it never changes. Um, I'm sorry, it does change, but never stops. Right. So what I, what I mean by that is now it's, it's all digital, mm -hmm. whereas previously it wasn't. So, um, and that was a learning process for me, you know, once I had, when I wrote my first book, you know, stepping out, okay, you have your book, but then no, that's not it. Like it's time to step forward, go to the next phase. And then, and then I used to always think like, okay, I, I wrote the book, I published, got a marketing, now I'm done. No, it's, it's like a constant, like almost like a, you know, 12 step program. It's yeah. like a lifelong journey. So that, that was what I had learned. Um, and then also how marketing, um, it changes. So now it's all visual. People mm -hmm. want to see it on screen. Mm -hmm. Whereas that was, uh, <laughs> that was a challenge for me as well, because I used to just write my stories and just shelve them. Mm -hmm. I mean, not even like pursuing publishing. I would just share them with like family and friends and then just put them away. It was like a hobby doing crossword puzzles or stitch work. And mm -hmm. then I had people, they would tell me, we need a copyright. And I was like, no, I don't want to know. It was like a big fear. Like, like you know, this is my, my big secret. How dare you take it from me? So mm -hmm. then I was like, oh, I'll copyright it. So I was like, okay, this is a risk, I'm done. Then somebody said, why don't you publish it? And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. And I remember I was talking to my friend one time and I, I just had like everything all planned out because the publishers were calling. I was kind of nervous because I was familiar with it. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, next time they call, you know, I'm just going to give them the runaround, just tell them this, that, and the other. And I remember her exact words as we parted on the phone. She had said, the only person who's holding you back is yourself. I was like, oh my God. Ooh. I was like a slap in the face. Like, I was like, oh. Okay, I was like, okay, I'm gonna call him right now. So, yeah, yeah, I was like, oh, it was a true awakening. So, everything um, that I've done, every project that I've created, it's been a risk that I that I would take, um, and people had would coach me through it. So, like the copywriting, the publishing. Then somebody said, "Why don't you make a movie?" And I'm like, "No, I don't want to do that." Well, then I made the movie trailer. <laughs> and then when I went to a training, they were talking about different ways to reach your target audience. And so they mentioned audio. And, you know, that was out of my alley. I was like, I don't know where to go, where to contact, and so forth. And I was like, lo and behold, okay, I'll do it. So it's like, I would take baby steps, you know, but somebody had to like, you know, nudge me. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, and so that's what kind of helped me get my feet wet and, and learn more. But I've learned that it never, it never stops. It changes, but it never stops. Always ongoing, always right. on, whatever the next technology is, they're already there. Right. So I want to go back because I just heard you say movie trailer. Yes. So have you made a movie? I have not made a movie, but I did movie trailers on Runaways. So okay. I have a teaser version and the extended version. And then um, I guess you could say like a, a mini movie for Cindy. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, you know, more like a short film, but yeah, it was supposed to have been a trailer, but it, it ended up like panning out to be like an expanded story. So I just titled it Cindy. So I didn't, I didn't give it the trailer name, but I didn't call it a movie. I just titled it Cindy. So however you want to interpret it. <laughs> and that goes for the rest of the audience. You know, if you see it as a trailer, great. If you see it as a movie, that's great too. But um, that was exciting. And I did, I did get to see it on the big screens at a conference. So I was excited about that. Oh, that that's was awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. So yeah. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so if I or someone listening or seeing this is a person who wants to become an author mm -hmm. and I say, I have this great idea, but I don't know where to start. What would your advice to me be? I would just say, go for it. 
take time out in your schedule, whether it be, you know, every day at nine o'clock at night or whatever your quiet time is, make time for yourself and put your thoughts on there. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're old school, get your notepads, that's how I did it. Or if I you want to stare, <laughs> <laughs> or stare at the screen and start typing, that, that works too. But I say, just go for it, just dive into it. Kind of like how my friend told me, you know, the only person holding you back is yourself. Mm -hmm. So don't hold yourself back because years, years can go by. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people think, oh, okay, it was just a couple of years, no problem. Well, yeah, I mean, don't, it'll sneak up on you before you know it's a decade. And Exactly. Have nothing out there. Right. <laughs> Are you still talking about this idea? You're like, I had this great idea. Did you write it? <laughs> well, no. Well, you have to put it down on paper. That, guys, is the first step. It's putting it down on paper. So do you have anything um, coming up that you want to tell us about? I'm actually adapting Runaways into audio. Yay, congrats. So, yeah, I think that should be ready by mid-January. Okay. Fingers crossed, so. Excellent, excellent. Yes, thank you, I'm excited. Well, it has been a pleasure to talk with you, Jamila. Thank you. Tell us how we can reach you. Tell us where all of your books are available. Give us your website and where all and your audiobooks. Are they on a different site? Let us know that as well. Um, so all my books are on Amazon mm -hmm. and and Audible. And then you can also go to my website. If you just type in Jamila D. Smith, contemporary writers, my website website should pop up, but it's spelled Jamila D. Smith. So J-A-M. I L A then B as in Diane Smith, Jamila D. Smith, contemporary fiction writer. And um, you can purchase from my website there, or you can purchase from Amazon, or also uh, from Google Play and Barnes and Nobles. So. Excellent. Excellent. So are you working on anything else at the moment? Are you working on a, another book? I'm more doing adapting now. So um, before COVID, we were talking about um, doing spreading seeds into a short film. Oh. So now um, I have to think outside the box. Like, what is that gonna look like? Are we gonna try it virtually? So mm. I'm doing some research on that. Okay. okay. But more so I'm doing adapting. Okay. It's changing my work into vision, visioning now as opposed to just being tense. So. It truly is a test of the time. So I wish you the best of luck on that. Cause I thank just, you. I don't know what to do right now. I'm just trying to write and get some more stuff out, but tell us your website name again and how are you on social media as well? I am. Okay. Uh, so it's Jamila D Smith. Weebly.com and I can write it out for you. So I'm also an, an elementary teacher. So I have, I draw your race for. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. We need <laughs> so I'm going to write out my website, okay. www.jamila. E. Smith. Dot Weebly. Dot com. I don't know if it's going to be backwards, but um, no, I can see it www.jamiladsmith.weebly.com. Yes, yeah. yes, excellent. And um, here are my books so that'll help, and it'll be books by Jamila D. Smith. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Jamila, for being Thank on. Thank you. I hope when you do your next adaptation um, that you'll come back on and share it with us and let's have some sure. more conversation about your very interesting books. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Jamila. Thank you, guys. You've been watching this episode of the Kim B. Davis Show. I hope you'll tune in for our next episode. And as always, remember, be magnificent.